Let's take a look at this problem. So we're going to prepare by first off just kind of like sketching out what the situation is. Because here's what's happening. There's a leaf that's rustling. Okay, and the leaf that's rustling is a source of sound. And then that source of sound makes waves that spread out and go bigger and bigger distances. Okay, now as the waves spread out, we know their intensity decreases. Okay, we know the intensity decreases as 1 over the square of the distance. And so you are at some distance from the leaf, and let's call that a distance r1. Okay, your distance r1 from the leaf, and it's right at the edge of your ability to be able to hear it. But the harvest mouse has hearing that's more sensitive to your, than yours. And so the harvest mouse can hear it at a greater distance than you can. And so the harvest mouse can hear this at a distance r2, which is greater than r1, because it can hear it at a smaller intensity. It can still detect the sound. Now we know your distance at which you hear it is 1.5 meters. The distance that the harvest mouse can hear it at, that's what we're being asked to find. How far from the harvest mouse is the leaf, okay? That's what we're looking to figure out. How far? We're looking for a distance. Is the harvest mouse from the leaf? How far is it from the source of sound? Now, your smallest sensitivity corresponds to zero decibels, okay? That's the smallest sound that you're sensitive to. That's the definition of zero decibels. But the harvest mouse can go down to negative 10 decibels, okay? So it's more sensitive to sound than you are, and this is the thing that relates those two. Now, we're going to have to convert those to intensities because the question of how the sound <clears throat> changes as it travels is a question of intensity, not sound intensity level. <clears throat> So first off, let's take these numbers and convert them to intensity. And to do that, we use this relationship. The intensity is equal to the smallest intensity that you can hear times 10 to the power beta over 10 decibels, where beta is the sound intensity level. So 0 decibels okay, corresponds to I0, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per square meter, times 10 to the 0 over 10 decibels. Well, 0 over 10, that's just 0. 10 to the 0 is just 1. And so the intensity that you can hear, I1, is just equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. But you know that. That's the definition of this, this number. That's the smallest intensity that you can hear. How about negative 10 decibels? Let's see what that corresponds to. Okay, that's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 12th watts per square meter times 10 to the negative 10 decibels over 10 decibels. So that corresponds to, see, we have 10 to the negative 1 10 to the negative 1 times 10 to the negative 12th is 10 to the negative 13th. So the intensity that the mouse can hear is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 13th watts per square meter, less than what you are sensitive to. So here's the intensity you can hear. Here's the intensity that the mouse can hear. That's intensity I2. Now, how does the intensity change with distance? Okay, in chapter 15, we're introduced to this relationship. The intensity at position 1 divided by the intensity at position 2 is proportional to the ratio of the squares of the distances. Okay, so it's R2 squared over R1 squared. And that means something at a greater distance will have a lesser intensity, and it's proportional to the square of the distance. So we don't actually have to compute the power that the rustling leaf emits. We don't have to compute that. We can just use this relationship. We know the two intensities. We know one distance, and we just have to find the second distance. And so our solution is more straightforward than it might appear at first. We just have to do this as a ratio reasoning problem. We're looking for R2. Now let's rewrite this equation in terms of R2. R2 squared is equal to R1 squared times I1 over I2. Well, you can hear 1 times 10 to the negative 12th watts per square meter. That's I1. The mouse can hear 1 times 10 to the negative 13th watts per square meter. That's I2. Okay? 
So I1 over I2, the intensity required for you to hear it, divided by the intensity required for the mouse to hear it, is just 1. It's just a factor of 10. You have to have a sound 10 times as intense as the mouse to be able to hear it. And so R2 is going to be bigger. Now R2 squared is bigger by a factor of 10, and so R2 is going to be bigger by a, a factor of about 3, we would guess. And in fact, that's what we get if we solve this. R2 is equal to the square root of R1 squared times 10. Well, R1, that's the distance that you can hear at. That's 1.5 meters. And if we take that number and put it in here, what we get for R2 is R2 is equal to 4.7 meters. It's about three times as far away. So the mouse can detect a sound from a distance of 4.7 meters, you can detect it from a distance of 1.5 meters, and that's because the mouse is sensitive to an intensity that's less by a factor of 10 the intensity that you're sensitive to. The mouse is more sensitive, so it can hear at a greater distance. It's sensitive to one-tenth the intensity as you are, and so it can pick up sounds at a distance about the square root of 10 as far away, approximately three times as far away, which is exactly what we find. And so our assessment is this. The results match our understanding of how the world works.